March 13th, and you're listening to Porch Talk. You already know it. Many thanks to Grayson Foster for the Porch Talk opening theme. Y'all check him out on Spotify and on his website. And while you're at it, why don't you mosey on over to Skirt Chaser Outfitters' website. It's spring break season. You're going to want to look like a boss. Why don't you snag some gear for chilling on the beach, by the grill, at the pool, or out on the boat. Listen, I don't know much about fishing, and I don't know much about women. But every time I put on a skirt chaser visor or a performance shirt, I start catching fish and women. Well, mostly fish, but that's a topic for another day, Brendan. Skirt chaser outfitters, stop fishing, start catching. Chris, you are absolutely ridiculous. You are one of the most ridiculous human beings I've ever met in my life. It's spring break. Uh, I, you, I, I got to bring the heat. <laughs> I mean, I let you take the opener once, and this is what you do with it. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, um, let's move on here. Like Chris said, this episode is brought to you by Skirt Chaser Outfitters, and we do have a great show for you. But first, let's do a little housekeeping here. Um, Chris and I have decided to roll out two shows a week, and each show is going to be about 15 minutes long instead of about 20 to 30. And uh, the another difference is that one episode is going to be dedicated to strictly SEC football, and then the other one is going to be outside of SEC football. Um, so today, for example, is outside of SEC football because uh, uh, on Sunday, was it was Selection Sunday, and we are going to give you our Elite Eight, our Final Four, and our National Champion. But first, Chris, any thoughts on how the committee did? I know you had some uh, pretty strong opinions on that. Yeah, I think the committee did an all right job for the most part. However, some ridiculous moves were made near the bubble. First of all, mm. Syracuse got in over Notre Dame. I think that is a total travesty. Notre Dame is a much better team than Syracuse. They're finally healthy. Their RPI shows it. Um, 20 points higher in the RPI than Syracuse was. Won the head-to-head. Another mm-hmm. head-scratching move was Oklahoma getting in. Are you kidding me with that move? The, they, they lost to... They lost to a whole host of teams down the backstretch. They lost to the South Carolina School for the Deaf and Blinds JV team, I'm pretty sure. You put them in over Penn State, over Nebraska, over Oklahoma State, bad move in my opinion. So I have a problem with Syracuse, and I have a problem with Oklahoma getting in. Yeah, I I think Syracuse and Notre Dame, I think that was a tough call to make. Um, But I think in the final uh, round, I think Syracuse was the right decision to make there. I know Notre Dame is finally healthy, but I think that they did have some bad losses there. So I think that uh, Syracuse was the right call. Yeah, they had bad losses when they didn't have uh, Bonzi Colson. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it. Just one player being out means that uh, doesn't mean that you're a complete team. And so if you're going to have one player out, doesn't mean that you're entire team should make yeah, the, uh, yeah. make the cut there. So, I mean, you're, you're judging it on a team, not one player. So, I think Syracuse was the right decision there. But, all right, let's dive into our Elite Eight here. Uh, first, I'll run through mine, and then uh, for those following at home, we will be running through uh, the left side of the bracket, so the south and the west, and then we'll be running through the right hand uh, of the bracket. So, that would be the east and the midwest. Um, so, first, starting in the south, I've got uh, Virginia versus Cincinnati in uh, the Elite Eight. And then for the West, I've got number four, Gonzaga, versus number one, Xavier, which I think will be a pretty good matchup there. Um, a little uh, rivalry there, um, in conference rivalry. And then for the East, I've got Villanova versus Purdue, which should also be another great game. Um, it's a lot of matured uh, players on that on both of those teams, and I think that uh, it's just going to be a really close game. Both of the players have uh, seen um, late games uh, in the season, and they've also seen uh, what it's like to be in the tournament. So I think that that would be a great game. A lot of maturity on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. And then for uh, the the last game I got here, I've got Kansas versus Michigan State, and I think that that's also going to be pretty intense. But I'm going to put Kansas out there. Um, but Chris, how about you? Where's your where's your yeah, list? Yeah, some in? solid picks there, Brennan. I'm going to run through mine, and then we can compare any differences. In okay. the South, I have Arizona facing off against Cincinnati, the Wildcats versus the Bearcats. They have a good. In the West, I have a rematch of last year's title game in Gonzaga versus North Carolina. In the East, I have Nova, probably the best overall team mm-hmm. in the uh, maybe besides Virginia in the uh, in the NCAA tournament right now versus Purdue, a, a team that I know you're high on. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the Midwest, I have Michigan State and ninth seeded NC State, the ninth seeded Wait. NC State Wolfpack. 
Wait, what was that last one? NC State, North Carolina State, the oh, Wolfpack. Oh, sweet death. Out of Raleigh, North Carolina, they're making a, a run to the Elite Eight. And I'm going to I'm gonna tell you right now, they beat Michigan State. NC State's in the kidding? Final Four. Oh, my God. You've got to be kidding me. NC State? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. I saw that that was a trending pick, and I thought, out of all the people, my big brother could not nearly be that stupid. I, I picked St. John's pick. to win the Big East, baby. Dude, Chris, all right. First of all, let's look at their season, first of all. All right, they were 21-11, and 11, and they lost seven of those uh, losses that they had. They lost in conference games. And it wasn't just the teams like Duke or Virginia, the a- okay? The ACC they also- has the, is the is – the- uh, best conference in basketball right now. Okay, okay, but they also lost to teams like Boston College and Georgia Tech, who uh, Georgia Tech also had an atrocious season. Then they also lost to Notre Dame. All right, and then the, all right. So what about the ACC? Then let's look outside the conference here. Okay, they lost eighty-one to seventy-six to UNC Greensboro, and then who's in the tournament? Oh, yeah, okay, but they still lost to a Southern Conference team in the midseason, and then they lost sixty-four to sixty to Northern Iowa. Are you kidding me? You have hey, you have North Carolina in the Elite Eight. They lost to a SoCon team. Wofford, okay. who didn't even win the SoCon. Okay, but yeah, but they didn't do to t- teams like Northern Iowa either. All right, all right, in second, all right, here we go. Even if we, even if we conceded their losses to UNCG and Northern Iowa and saying that it was early on in the season and that the team matured since then and is a completely different team than early on, all right, let's take a look at that Midwest bracket, okay? To start off the tournament, NC State has to, pay, has to play a battle-tested test, Seton Hall in the eighth seed, okay? A team that has proven to battle against heavy tournament favorites such as Villanova, Butler, Creighton, and Xavier. Okay, they're all going to be tough. Uh, all right. Yeah, but they. All- but Seton Hall, zero and five against top thirty-two teams. Zero and five. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do this. All right. So it's going to be a tough game in my opinion, but they are beatable. Okay. So that's not crazy. All right. But say they make it to the second round. Okay. Where they're going to have to play the number one Kansas. I mean, come on, man. There's no way that's going to happen. All right. uh, There's no way they're going to beat number one Kansas. Yeah, uh, uh, say that to Bucknell when they beat him in the first round. Say it to Bradley who beat him in the first round. Say it to Wichita State who beat him in the second round. Say it to Stanford who beat him in the second round. Okay, Kansas, right. Kansas, Bill Self's Kansas team, I never trust to make a serious run towards a national championship. They okay. won one in 2008 off a just okay. out of the, my uh, performance by Darren Collison. Okay. Besides that, I, I, I never trust a Bill Self team. All right. All right. So you know what? I'll, what if I say this is a magical time and NC State somehow beats the number one seed Kansas, all right? Then we're more likely going to see them playing either Clemson or Auburn, okay? If you're looking at Clemson, then I'll give it a wash. Sure, I'll give you a wash because Clemson won the first game in the uh, the regular season play and they won 78-62 to and then NC State, NC State squeaked out a 78-77 to win, okay? They won by one point, all right, but I'll say it's a wash, okay? Even though Clemson's clearly going to win that game. But Auburn, there's no freaking way. Auburn is too quick and too athletic for state, and they will wear them down. And for if and if for some odd, ungodly reason NC State makes it to the Elite Eight, we're probably looking at them playing either Michigan State or Duke. And to me, this is where the, your biggest fault is. Not only are they going probably going to have to play Michigan State or Duke, they're also going to be running on fumes. Because for me, I don't see any of these games where they're gonna, in the tournament that we've listed so far. And I don't see them any of those games being blowouts where they're going to be able to rest their starters. And so naturally, at this point in time, these guys are going to be tanked. So if they do make it to the Elite Eight, this is where I see them getting destroyed. Absolutely no way they get past the Elite Eight. All right? But we're playing devil's advocate here, and if they go to the Final Four, then you got to look at their Final Four opponent in the East. And for me, I had them taking Villanova, where they are tough, talented, and yeah. experienced. They have yeah, I, lo- I have them losing to Villanova. Okay. I mean, all right. At least there's some sanity in there. All right. But there's let, no way. Uh, let's go all the way back. All right. So we talked a little bit about the Kansas matchup. So let's say NC okay. State beats Seton Hall, okay. beats Kansas in the second round, takes on either Clemson or Auburn. I agree with Clemson. It's a wash. I think uh, both teams know each other. That, that's going to be a tight game. They play Auburn. That, the same Auburn team that you're so high on in terms of uh, great defense, great athleticism, great mm-hmm. range. Same Auburn team that lost to South Carolina was getting killed by South Carolina. Okay, it was South Carolina seventeen sixteen, and this is the same Auburn team that gave up, went gave up a thirty to five run to Alabama. Okay, all right, two things there. Alabama, they are they are extremely athletic. They have a lot of endurance there. And South Carolina, they could have been a team if it depended on the team that showed up. South Carolina was two teams this year, in my opinion. They were a team that either you know 
just played bad defense, sloppy defense, did not make take good shot selections, or they played the complete opposite like that, and they played like the Final Four team that they looked like last year. So to me, South Carolina, that's that doesn't mean a whole lot because South Carolina showed up to play against uh, Auburn that game, and that's just sign of a, that's sign of an athletic, um, talented but inexperienced team in my opinion. They don't have a whole lot of talent, um, or have a whole lot of uh, upperclassmen leadership, in my opinion, on this uh, South Carolina team. So I think that that's, that's a toss up there. But I All think right. Auburn, I think Auburn's the kind of team that is going to be able to step up and win out in the uh, in the tournament. I don't think Auburn. Uh, if if the whole argument for Auburn is that they'll step up, they'll show that when push comes to shove, they'll be the team that I, they haven't shown that all season. Whenever All right. whenever they're backed in the corner, they either Barely win the game, or they lose in epic proportion. Okay, yeah. Well, and for me, I was I was saying I was playing devil's advocate here because I had them losing to Clemson in the second round there. So okay, I mean, we're right, playing. Let me, let me run through NC State season. Yes, you talk about the early losses to some of the out of conference losses to UNCG. You had the uh, bad loss early on in the season to Notre Dame. They also beat Arizona. They beat Duke. Mm-hmm. And they beat North Carolina at North Carolina. Okay. I think th- this is a team that had a very tough schedule, that played well in that schedule, especially starting out with the, with the team that lost their best player, Dennis Smith Jr., last year, mm-hmm. who has a new head coach. It took a while for them to, to kind of get things going. I think this is a team, much like South Carolina last year, they have a guy that is a baller. Last year, South Carolina had Sundarius Thornwell. This year, NC State. Has Freeman at guard, 6'3", guy out of uh, Charlotte. He's a baller, kind of guy that can take over a game. Ask Arizona, ask North Carolina, ask Florida State at the end of the season. All mm-hmm. tournament teams, he averages over 15 points a game. I like him at guard. And then Yurtseven, the seven-footer uh, center, the seven-foot center, can stretch the floor, shoots the three-ball well. I, I, j- I feel like this NC State, if there's a team to make a run like South Carolina did, it's NC State. All right, my biggest problem – for for NC State is that you look at their schedule, like you said, and the the games they won big, most of them have been pretty close, and especially like later on in the season. Like you look at this, they they on February fourteenth they beat Syracuse seventy four seventy. All right, and then you're looking at um, and then there's some pretty bad losses here too. All right, so they lost to Florida State a ninety two to seventy two. All right, they no no, lost no, no. A, they they beat Florida oh, sorry, State. Sorry, 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 they beat ninety two seventy two. All right, that's a good win. All right, but then you lose to Georgia Tech 78-75, and then they beat Louisville 76-69, and then here's my biggest one. They lost to Boston College 91-87. So for me, there's a couple of close games in here where they should have really blown out these teams if, you're, if they're going to make a Final Four push for me. Because if these games are already going to be close, then there's no way that they're going to be able to squeak out this many wins and make it to the Final Four. I mean, this is some stuff where, you know, survive in advance. I mean, I think they're going to make another... 30 for 30 documentary if they are going to make it all the way to the final four years. <laughs> I mean, that's just, to me, it's just seems a little unrealistic. I, I, think, I think it's crazy. I think it's honestly, I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy. I, there's no way it's crazy because, first of all, there's always some weird – talk to George, George Mason, South Carolina last year. There's always some weird – Davidson, there's always some weird stuff. So it's, nothing is totally crazy in the NCAA tournament. No. Second of all, I actually like the the – uh, side of the bracket that they're if they had to play Villanova if this was the 8-9 in the yeah. east and they had to play Villanova they're done in the second round I think they could beat Xavier and then if they're in, the, in Virginia I think they lose Virginia so I think yeah. they they benefit from an easier side of the bracket maybe the easier side would have been um the west to be able to play Xavier as the one seed yeah. um and then probably have to play Gonzaga but I, I like where State was seated. I like the side of the bracket that they're on. I think they can make a run. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Only time will tell. Uh, I still think you're crazy here, but um, we are running out of time. Um, before we run out of time here, though, who do you have winning? Who do you have making to the national championship? And then who do you have winning the whole thing? Yeah, Final Four. Got Nova, NC State. Nova beats NC State. On the other side, I have Arizona beating Cincinnati and meeting mm. up with North Carolina. Mm. North Carolina beats Arizona in that game. We have a rematch of the national championship two years ago. North Carolina beats Villanova in a very close game. Okay. Well, for my final four, I've got the Villanova-Kansas matchup, and then I've got Virginia-Gonzaga. And I do have some upsets in the bracket, but for uh, 
for me, my, that's my final four. And then I've got Virginia meeting Nova in the championship game. And then for the tiebreaker, I've got Villanova winning 75-68 against Virginia. I think it's going to be a good game. Nice. I, so, I mean, it's, it's a good bracket. The only thing we disagreed on, I had Arizona. Um, and NC State, and, obviously. Yeah, obviously the <laughs> NC State pick. But I had Arizona um, uh, in in the Elite Eight instead of Virginia. But yeah. I think Virginia's a good team. There's just something about them I can't get fired up. But if you just take the air out of the ball, shoot when there's two seconds left on the shot clock, eventually it's going to catch up to you. you got to yeah. be more aggressive. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Well, that wraps up our episode here today. Um, and if you disagree or agree with Christopher on NC State or any other of our picks, um, please don't forget to comment your thoughts here and share with your friends and give us a like on Facebook. Till next time.